Hello. I just wanted to welcome everybody to tonight's reading. I'm Kelly Kivlin. I work in the curatorial department at DIA. And um, just wait until a couple people get settled. Thank you all for coming to the last reading of the series this spring. Um, as many of you know, the series was reinstated in 2011, and it's curated by Vincent Katz. And he brings together two poets, usually of different generations, to create parallels between their voices and the work. It's a great pleasure to welcome the poets tonight, John Yao and Arlo Quint. Thank you both for your generous acceptance to be part of the program this spring. We also want to extend a warm thank you to Amalia Dayan and Adam Lindemann, Barbara and Charles Wright, and an anonymous donor for their generous support of this program. They've been uh, long supporters of this program for the last couple of years, and it's been really wonderful to have that support. The series is also supported in part with public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. And as always, want to give a special amount of thanks to Brooklyn Brewery for the beer, and uh, to the entire DIA staff, actually, who have worked tirelessly on the program this entire year. We really want to thank you all for every corner of the program and really making it what it has been this last year. It's been great. Um, just a couple notes about tonight. We all have a short intermission after Arlo's reading, and we welcome you to peruse the book heart or grab another beer, um, catch some air outside, whatever you choose. And I also encourage you to take a calendar for the Gramsci Monument. It's a new work by Thomas Hirshhorn that's opening up this summer on July 1st, and will run through September 15th. It's taking place in uh, the South Bronx on Forest Houses, which is a New York City Housing Authority development in the Morrisania neighborhood. And um, the calendar is quite extensive and comprehensive and includes all the programming that will be a part of the project, including some great poets as well. And um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Vincent Katz, who will provide his always wonderful introductions for the poets this evening. Thanks so much for coming again. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you all for coming out on this cold, strange spring night. Um, it's my great pleasure to be hosting Arlo Quint and John Yao tonight. It's our last reading of the season. It's a little sad, but it's going to be a great night, so I'm excited about that. And I'd like you to make a mental note to check us out again in the fall. We've got a great series coming up. You can look it up on the website. We've got Tom Rayworth coming from England to read with Jack Kimball. We've got um, Patrizia Cavalli with Rosanna Warren uh, in celebration of uh, Cavalli's first publication of her poems into English. Um, we've got Ron Paget with Tom Devaney and Robert Kelly with Anna Moscovakis. So it's a great fall. Please come back. We'll begin with Arlo Quint. Arlo Quint was born in Waterville, Maine in 1977. He studied with Robert Creeley, Benjamin Friedlander, and Jennifer Moxley at the University of Maine at Orono, from which he received a BA in English Literature in 1999, followed by an MA in 2004. He is the author of the chapbooks Photogenic Memory from Lame House in 2007 and Drawn In from Fewer and Further in 2010. And he collaborated with Charles Wolski on Check Out My Lifestyle from Well Greased in 2012. Quint's first full-length collection, Death to Explosions, is forthcoming from Sky Sill any day now. He's an editor of Brawling Pigeon, and program coordinator for the Poetry Project at St. Mark's Church in New York City. Arlo Quint disarms language in his poems. His use of phrase, while in the lineage of the John Ashbery of the Tennis Court of, has a different effect. Rather than being disjunctive, collage-like, Quint's phrases, which do not go together under the frames of logic or normal, or normal syntactic connectivity, are also not paratactic. Their tactic, by contrast, is one of harmonic connectivity. In a poem from Drawn In, Quint writes, when is more there than some in the sense of time as blocks, other coordinates that are still here? 
from at a distance in another tree. This harmoniousness has a social component made explicit in the chapbook in which each poem is dedicated to a specific friend. Quint's ownership of a poetics of coterie comes not literally from within the poems, though personal glints are apparent, but rather from a sense of the sequence of poems itself as a personal and therefore political statement. Quint's new collection is divided into three parts, two long poems and a section of sonnet length poems. While maintaining his adversarial stance towards commonplace poetics, Quint is working more and more deeply into traditional forms or formats, and we can feel and see his emphasis on the caesura and internal rhymes, bringing to mind some of Robert Kelly's recent rhythmic explorations. In the sequence commemorative thought, Quint writes, in high fever, in ordinary times, either next year, altered be all right, hollow empty sphere, pale blue dot, so daily appears, light with dark. One feels Quint is working up to something big. This may be coming in an evolution of the formal rhythmic pieces into a larger communitarian historic, historical context. Whatever comes next for Quint, tonight we're about to be treated to the current incarnation of his far-reaching poetics. Please help me welcome Arlo Quint to Dia. Thank you all for coming. I'm gonna adjust this. All right. I'm gonna read uh, from two long pieces. Uh, one Vincent just quoted from, uh, Commemorative Thought, I'll read first. What's all this space for, if not to rise in, to write out, wandering away and more to side with whose heart from no one? What to be loved just alone along a line, the long cold shore, too strong this composed wonder of frame in a sea of signs, to what end, just below life, a million to one last night? But then one says anything, traces of a former sight to go by in summertime, a form of chance still holds, the tracking shot is well played, a few parts lost in the scene. Understood via lost maze, locked on while the target speaks, surface, truth, air power, please, thanks, and circles, and plays drone, same figure, wrong pose, can't be the place this fair year. Not a care in the world, what's left, a healing to burn, echo back, sighs found, completely certain the first time, comfortable notes tended by the flowers, arise and drink to your bliss. Pictures of angel-based illness, writing completely foreign policy, lawn ornamentation, satanic space, and you. Graceful exit from the imaginary time. Pays off in pattern recognized, mistakes standing high order of the day. However much well enough alone, the northern cross, the swan, folding until disappeared in its own rest of the world ready, fields deselected, Fulton papaya, the resurrection, the next thing, alteril. Here, while recurring cities based on general interest, controlled theory and parts of some former state, measures in place, refuse to understand, problems vanish, possible answers, artificially advanced emotional disconnect sets in as part of a fairly coordinated attack. Different facts, deep north, naturals, heading out to the minus world for ice flowers, hand-eye encryption, more realistic non-enemy would love in lieu of liberation from suffering. False discovery, technical problems, convincing sacrificial complications assigned to weather and others. A dull ache converted into its own reward to keep moving, making the rounds in relative freedom. Damaged luxury of old custom, medal of honor guy who was in it for the free t-shirt. Radio call in not blending with regular daylight outside. The mirror reversal is well timed, leading to a tile pattern, greetings from a future collapse. Difficulties holding down a sign, try to relax, imitate life, make the train, fare thee well. You born today, it begins to snow. The cold that freezes the inside of your nose on first breath comes to represent an empty depth here and now. 
People will love you, but mornings will be bleak and break the thought, northern lights to pink orange windows, 4 to 5 a.m., smoke in the living room. Why ask questions? Days explain themselves. Want to be remembered, but can't be, quoted word for word. Turning to rain later, you don't say anything. Not a scene of tragedy, not a single picture. The common loon, big as a duck, but not a duck. The great blue heron possessed by the big picture, critics were baited with an acid tongue. You will eventually create the standard guide for North American field identification. Find the hidden faces in the trees, off to Sun Valley. What the idea is standing by and unnecessary to describe what's behind the great fear, a rare bit fiend, realist in a lawn tennis world. Of these difficulties somehow, parallel altitude encounters with gold, virtual mirroring cut with real quantities and formal existence. Remote views, lake shore wasn't there before, saving pills in the country background, serving time, naming places, separating phases out symbols, waiting fluorescent light lines, the green fields and from the clouds, vacant musing. Slack in thought, the terrors, early miseries, vexations into one track, gigantic degree of certainty wrecked, vast and irregular planes of ice, bright visions of extensive usefulness occupied by exploded systems. In the same passing trance, an equivalent problem above, most of what happens because one way is to stop, paint leaves, break a hive out of the walls, whatever color ominous sky takes, adjusting a high-pitched whine, undifferentiated mind overhead, mirror says hi, the field described, and then alienated, taking over breakfast, being the waitress, midday, late early, serious drift, ancient streaming tables. Here in the collected future, selected invention of the wheel, restructured debt from hell, again with the game theory. The machines are human beings, but what do they accomplish? Creating a context through the screen, relatives, landscape full of them, as they are, the point worn from overview. More ways to be seen than ever lived without water where, west to California, through the fake Maitreya handprint sales plan, where Nirvana arrives as Mabel helicopter nihilism in town, suspended midair. A youthfulness to run circles in space. Raji, Sax Brady, looks into the camera to say, keep rolling, giant epic loss. And one more question, not lonely, here with stacks of money. Endless reign of the same change. You born today, brilliant move. The Mars bar will raise your kids. And on the surface is a face, when to get ready, where to be perfect. The signal to disappear along the way, just a thought, too simply arranged. Senses needs more ashes cascading and patience, mental age, bringing home other lemons. Through an unlikely turn, know and see everything, twins. Say in here, moving field, think in a way that stops out back, general fear, all be over in a moment. Vicarious serenity in mind, some distance to look through, vague acceleration to lead the way, the heart, the radio station, just because, just a little while, stay on the couch all day, night. The bird of paravision was right, considering can't even hold this flower, can't take a walk in the woods, thin out, ordinary, true. The reverse side of a full circle come to dimly, but there nonetheless. In light of Mexican jail footage, think carefully, basement peyote, see gold narrative reaching the finals, all signs point to complete change, not long, complicated history, clapping for certain good days. No later than health fail, mostly felt by the older folks living near the crystal Andy Rooney, totally insane. February diversion of inner fist fight, nothing of the principle. And so much for hugging the shore, negative reason for the tone deaf, and no poems for the prelude, O oh moon, and when to stop from writing it down, the raccoon war from the forest hills long form. It's better work or else, usual settings of evil omen, object to the signing, move anywhere, open in spring to rain. What better than to be gone a while, taken in by the surroundings? This is how not shooting the messenger from the future, coughing through the lives, hello, zombie billionaires living in captivity. We wanted the money back, then we took it. Like words, like winners, circulate the picture, read the problem into the room. No new abstractions, fiending, hid in a cloud, and soon we get somewhere. 
continual ending, last minute. What business, residual statement, turned down, feels drunk, on fire, part two. Out thunk, bank robbed, already awake, waking thoughts. Capital sleep wearing off, reliable numbers give way, all hinges, all answers, buzzed in better light from hell between appearances. Reason being decoded labor, emotional coincidence over miles. Less contained, clear harmony, all corners, all city. Selfless leaves, see, tell, adjust game, present tense, double frame, turntables. In high fever, in ordinary times. Either next year, altered be all right. Hollow empty sphere, pale blue dot, so daily appears, light with dark. Earns the bonus, breaks a hold, from the forest up another night. From the same never before seen overcomplicated material standard of living, trouble with the horizon surrounded by love. Should be past evolving the plot, inepto human terrain stay out. Nervous reaction leaves vacuum for home, bad history getting heavy, getting done. Rethought studying hunger night for days over rest of all possible worlds. You born today, breathe, play, air. What foreseeable care trashes the life, the other money nowhere in sight. I should say it's a real pleasure to read with John Yao. Uh, I've admired his work for a long time. It's great to be here with him. So I'll read one more piece. Um, this is uh, from 360. One more drink. Once I saw a devil in a flame of fire and do so love, yet when they have devised night's bright days, when dreams do show constant stars, read art or else thy end. Draws how thy precious minutes waste, blanking on the breathers of this world, vacant leaves these offices stealth mayst know. Thy memory cannot contain over most desolate nothing else I'll enter the shapes again taking out the lines. Allies to a time spent out in the open air, what to recognize later in the evening. A state so familiar from long silence, many years save leaving in the last moment, return to categories of pathos for something bad to happen, you wait here. Wake up and there'd be nothing, each rose in the botanical garden in its name, the way one makes the reason for many hours over what seems so obvious. Halfway through the journey of this life, crossing out things to say. Whatever comes across doesn't stay very long before being safely complicated. We would be late reaching the failed state's line, sundown not getting it done. Around the time when the police start to panic. Shout more nature verse. Welcome rain or long-awaited letter, now that each thought is fair game, trees and wind arrive later. A young samurai leaves Kyoto, abandoning the woman he loves in order to gain a fortune by marrying the governor's daughter. Years later, he's wealthy, miserable, and destroyed by regret. He returns to Kyoto. The woman he loves is still there. She forgives him completely. She hasn't changed, but it's a dream. He wakes up in the arms of her skeleton and stumbles through the ruins of his former home, having been transformed into an insane ghoul. In the next one, there's a snowstorm, then spring. It's fall when, living on air alone, a young samurai is forced to commit harakiri with his own bamboo sword. What could it all mean? Human condition hereby released. On a battlefield, you'd be killed as a sympathizer. Here yesterday was the longest day of the year, but it didn't seem that way, it just was. Whatever the cause, no further change to the array of all possible effects tolerated now. You can always meet those you really wish to, going first to third on a rocket like that, while the mayor looks on. The effort suggests an awareness of death coming soon. The clock indicates the moment, but eternity indicates Walt Whitman. Rise after rise, a few lines of sense, the sun out in this former chance known as the phenomenal world. An empty, dark, reattached sky later, right after first few seconds of sleep. Successive happenings open slower, memories, a pyramid, so to speak, whose point is the present action always looking to disappear a little while. 
turns out to be waiting for complete interference to lead many more lives. Taken from what will flow on in the interval, the local system of reminders, a final inspiration before laying down the hang-it-all Robert Browning. Not calling you names, says Kay. Poetry is not made of such things. Music let go by language to settle by the numbers and the drowning sensation. There's plenty of reason for socialist revolution against corporate culture, against whatever waking moment has next and the permanent failures. Alienated, illumination increasingly obscure. They are the abstract feeling, wolves, direct experience and then vanish. Dumb about feeling better in cloud, China reveal to say of their time, loci locally heavy silence, fields, rising surface. It was what they believed in. Baseball almost over, air, dehydrated roots. It was all one direction, interior design with all country, powdered style. Things not telling weather, materials sunny, sleeper, bathed in light. Nothing to go on, Southern California, slowly summers, and why not? Ages and occasions communicate primary colors to work. Drinking cloudy, concentrate to read the tone, pushing the limits, again, pink drinks. A few days later, that letter, subtlety, days with toil, nights with sleep. Your fair instance, world's best garden. Not enough. Words to describe variable time or the experience of stillnesses received, each other into the empire, Detroit at Chicago, Monday night, retire, dividend recap, the heaviest rain on record converted to flowers. Magic, think the radios in the bathroom and the radios in battle, sketches of groundwork snapped into place with the final couplet, country cousin versus hillbilly shadow. Advanced living, having a dream where nothing happens lasts many, many days, changing planes, starting a fight in line for the bathroom. Part of a larger, more personal war. Stray dog with severed hand and mouth, easy to remember. You won't get hired looking like that. The more numerous the external moments the present duration seemed, more capable breaking the object lesson. Day and night, dawn to desk, what motor paths will rise up to take what chance for what semblance might make its way out? So that these are the changes that were ordered to be made. For more material, all soft and cloudy, carelessly all fixed up, a can of beer, lots of flowers, cauliflower, don't forget Waco, flowing hair, bringing the horn. Step out of window and swing on a velvet rope to top of old wall. Dear Stone, don't mention names, and made his own turn golden with the dust. An ordinary sequence, ice to water to steam, carbon cycle in a star, a sun. Your karma yoga assignment got changed to typing by an agreement, that's why. Time turns to money and pays dearly on account of memory. Didn't think to die in this forest paradise for the defeated. Crawl on all fours from now on, villain. A few flaws in the transition. Being prisoners of war would cramp our style. It seems the reason for being here was to see the whales play the tigers. Already we are boldly launched upon distant deeps or skies. Hey, cold beer light, the explosions are for fun. The rest of the night continues on. There are echoes and reflections up to the windows through difficulties to the stars, no island and island either. The relevant information exists as a minor entertainment. Another demoralized team waiting for a change by, from, with, in, on, or at management. Survivors deliver souvenirs later. Whitest whites, normal casual, hand washable. Our hero is successfully unhinged and the cursed sentence rings in his eyes once more still weeping. Even to this day, the marble trickles with tears, geranium leaves all through the grass. The music is softer on the sides of the music, the imitators of any kind of sound. The bees didn't figure we'd find it. They made it for themselves. Don't try to clarify in person to the sacred mountain. They were planning to eat it all winter long. Go in beauty in front of the daffodils, the doors flew open, hovering face down above the world. Still wonder, can't they message in the air, the part where the lifestyle breaks down, beside the lake, beneath the trees. Shanghai bok choy, smaller than baby bok choy. Pre-corporate apocalypse, chanting at the box office, the transition is continuous. All countermeasures in the plainest language, demonstrating the basic shape is most important. 
not more years, but lesser and lesser to forget until the cold external factors are inside us. Nothing to go unnoticed. Infinite presence delivers these orders. Many noble persons with large gifts of money, no one knew why there was no ending with the length of five long winters when empty cold order there was. And as if real things and real persons were there, then on waking all disappeared. Experience becomes description of experience. Moments get away, chased by song, inexorable change. Here today, full sounding, pairing words, numbering pairs, things repeat. And as the sea is not known for being shallow, we must not be too elated. After all, we are completely free to go. We must have to be somewhere. Why else behave so badly? The rest of the difference will remain unexplained, flowers and death together again. Provenzan Provenzano Lanza shredding the walk to work. Looking forward to a little less sense, couldn't see when it started snowing, cold clouds falling all in the same motion. One minute says one thing, and then the next, resonant life, taking over the groceries. Organized in flashes, vague enemy, distant forces, sunk into the background. Only way is through. Then realize continuous materials only get the free channels between overgrown paths involved to find this tree, but their search was all in vain. Small town espionage, changing up the passwords, grass water volume. Still on mind as early morning, cult leaders gone wild, the capital version. Trapped by thoughts, escape now, get lifted up in a fielding for many lives. Swimming in the country, missing from the debate, devote these mountains. In the same measure that psychic life unreeled into action from pure knowledge, sail on from Smyrna and the Brig Minerva of which no account has been received. A thousand works one day and the next nothing, occurring near a world line, money and words to be lost on last night's crowd, stars, trees, water, clean air, and a fire to be holy across states. Having a way of listening in waves, each number a name, each set to be framed, each theory built in its sway, not knowing the half of it and then half again endlessly in a hollow cloud. A lamb hearing the wolves around the sheepfold howling would know the answer. Become a fountain. Should never have been included. No, in no counting after Trinity. <laughs> Last night the dream you had ended this morning. Without sound or sense, without full range of motion. But what does it mean to be continued? Up late, playing biwa for the ghosts. Sleeping like a dead man during the day. Everyone getting suspicious. It's all been a vast illusion, except for the call of the dead. People in charge long since gone. Heartbreak closed for renovation. Were they really captured on Triangle Mountain? A line in three spaces and a few more years worth of technical details. Outside, there's a bell ringing in through the window with waves of traffic into the recently cleaned kitchen when the ocean sounds from Dan O'Hara begin. Later, it's quiet and the major has arrived. The streets are empty, so the message goes through. More life, please. Thanks. Okay, so we're gonna get started again. I'm gonna reintroduce Vincent Katz, who will give an introduction tonight for John Yao. I'm gonna wait until everybody gets settled. Okay, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Vincent. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. It's my pleasure to introduce John Yao, whom, whom I have known for many, many years. I'm not going to say how many. I was in high school. It was the punk era. Let's just put it that way. And here we are tonight. John Yao was born in Lynn, Massachusetts in 1950. He studied with Robert Kelly at Bard College, from which he received a BA in 1972, 
and with John Ashbery at Brooklyn College, receiving an MFA in 1977. He is the author of over 50 books of poetry, fiction, essays, and collaborations with visual artists. Yao's poetry books include Crossing Canal Street, Broken Off by the Music, Corpse and Mirror, Borrowed Love Poems, and most recently, Further Adventures in Monochrome from Copper Canyon Press, and the chapbook Egyptian Sonnets from Rain Taxi, both from 2012. He's also an editor, and he's the publisher of Black Square Editions, a press devoted to poetry, fiction, and translation. He was the arts editor of the Brooklyn Rail from 2007 to 2011, and is now an editor of the online magazine Hyper Allergic Weekend, where he regularly posts his reviews and commentary. He was named a Chevalier in the Order of Arts and Letters by France's Ministry of Culture in 2002. He teaches in the Visual Arts Department of Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers University and lives with his family in Manhattan. In his poem, The Reading of an Ever-Changing Tale, the title poem from his 1977 chapbook of the same name, Yao wrote, Certain colors got lodged under the fingernails before their names came to grace our speech. This could be taken as emblematic of Yao's entire approach to poetry and a key to a large part of his achievement. That is to say, Yao has an uncanny ability to fix on the moments when language fails or becomes unintentionally funny. It's a neat trick. The poet is aware, but his language is not. The, but the key word here is colors. Yao is precise in pouncing on images, sounds, phrases, and turning them so that they do something unexpected. Part of this was imbibed from the poetics of John Ashbery, but another part is specifically keyed to Yao's personal experience as a Chinese American man living in the 20th and 21st centuries in the USA. In Genghis Chan, Private I-13, Yao writes, quote, it is hard to keep pretending you are a yellow chink in a hall of dusty linen. You, be you begin believing you are just another handkerchief, wiping away the laundress's tears. Yao's poems, though they contain the veracity of a lived life, begin in the imagination. A child's Virgil from Further Adventures in Monochrome begins, led by a talking blue and red frog, a wooden cart trundles treasure up mosaic mountain, collection of talismans in which heroes and heroines have taken flight. It is the tone in a John Yao poem that tells us the most about the poet, his culture, and particularly the take of the specific poem. Quote, I have a sampler in my brain that takes what is said and feeds it to me with an electronic spoon, close quote, is a typical line. There is a self-deprecating deflation that is endearing as it is funny, but it is countered by a just as omnipresent undertone of romantic lyricism. For John Yao is one of our most engaging, if again, not literal, love poets. For this remarkable achievement and in anticipation of a night of enjoyment, please join me in welcoming John Yao to Dia. Uh, I was thinking of Charles Bukowski, I once saw him read on TV and he had a refrigerator next to him full of beer. <laughs> I decided I wouldn't ask Dee to do that for me. <clears throat> I just imagined it. All right, so I'm gonna read, um, can you all hear me? I'm gonna start with a poem that was just uh, reprinted in the Norton Postmodern Anthology. I was thinking again. A dumb review from Angie Malenko. I hope she's not here. <laughs> or if she is, now you know how I feel. 
So the poem's called English. It has a little line before, you need to speak Singlish to express a Singaporean feeling. Catherine Liu. I never learned Singlish. I cannot speak Taglish, but I've registered the tonal shifts of Dumglish, Bumglish, and Scumglish. I do not know English, but I will study it down to its black and broken bones. I do not know English, but I speak Dung and Dungaree, Satrap and Claptrap. Today I speak barbecue and canoe. Today I speak running dog and yellow dog. I do not know spin gloss, but I hear humdrum and humdinger, bugaboo and jigaboo. I do not know angrish, but I can tell you that my last name consists of three letters and that technically all of them are vowels. I do not know umglish, but I know how to eat with two sticks. Oh, but I do know English because my father's mother was English and because my father was born in New York City in 1921 and was able to return to America in 1949 and become a citizen, I know speak Chinese, Chanel, or Cheyenne. I do not know English because I'm, I do know English because I'm able to tell others that I am not who they think I am. I do not know Chinese because my mother said that I refused to learn it from the moment that I was born and that my refusal was one of the greatest sorrows of her life, the other being the birth of my brother. <laughs> I, do, I do know Chinese because I understood what my mother's friend told her one Sunday morning shortly after she sat down for tea. I hope you don't mind that I parked my helicopter on your roof. Because I do not know Chinese, I've been told that means I'm not Chinese by a man who translates from the Spanish. He said that he had studied Chinese and was therefore closer to being Chinese than I could ever be. No one publicly disagreed with him, which according to the rules of English means he's right. I do know English and I know that knowing it means that I don't always believe it. The fact that I disagree with the man who translates from the Spanish is further proof that I'm not Chinese, because all the Chinese living in America are hardworking and earnest and would never disagree with someone who's right. This proves I even know how to behave in English. I do not know English because I got divorced and therefore I must have misunderstood the vows I made at City Hall. I do know English because the second time I made a marriage vow, I had to repeat it in Hebrew. I do know English because I know what fortune cookie means when it's said of a Chinese woman. The authority on poetry announced that I discovered that I was Chinese when it was to my advantage to do so. My father was afraid that if I did not speak English properly, I would be condemned to work as a waiter in a Chinese restaurant. My mother, however, said that this was impossible because I didn't speak Cantonese because the only language waiters in Chinese restaurants know how to speak is Cantonese. I do not know either Cantonese or English, English or English. Anguish is a language everyone can speak, but no one listens to it. I do know English because my father's mother was Ivy Hillier. She was born and died in Liverpool after living in America and China and claimed to be a descendant of the Huguenots. I do know English because I misheard my grandmother and thought she said that I was a descendant of the Argonauts. I do know English because I remember what made in Japan meant when I was a child. I learn over and over again that I do not know Chinese. Yesterday a man asked me how to write my last name in Chinese because he was sure that I had been mispronouncing it and that if this was how my father pronounced it then the poor man had been wrong all his life. I do not know Chinese even though my parents conversed in it every day. I do know English because I had to ask the nurses not to put my mother in a straitjacket and reassure them that I'd be willing to stay with her until the doctor came the next morning. I do know English because I left the room when the doctor told me I had no business being there. 
I do not know Chinese because during the Vietnam War I was called a gook instead of a chink and realized that I had managed to change my spots without meaning to. I do not know English because when my father said that he would like to see me dead, I was never sure, quite sure what he meant. I do not know Chinese because I never slept with a woman whose vagina slanted like my mother's eyes. I do not know either English or Chinese, and because of that, I did not put a gravestone at the head of my parents' graves as I felt no language mirrored the ones they spoke. So I'm going to read uh, from two recent books, and then I'll read some new work. So uh, some of you know the artist Tom Naskowski, who goes by the name of Thomas Naskowski, but we think of him as Tom. And one day he and I were in a car in uh, New Haven driving around and I imagined that, or I, I heard him say, I don't like Egyptian art. And I was completely floored by this because I never heard Tom say something so categorically. So then I didn't ask him if to repeat himself because I thought I needed this hallucination. And then I decided right on the spot that we were going to collaborate and I was going to write a group of poems called Egyptian Sonnets. <laughs> because as you probably have figured out, the Egyptians didn't write sonnets. <laughs> Two, a hippo sits patiently in a palm tree while a hoopoe hops up a ladder. On desert's edge, far from flickering oil lamps, a slugy plays tag with jackals a leopard herds gazelles and geese with a jeweled flute, and a young lady rat sitting on a pearl throne waits for monkeys to slide forth their gifts. A lion and a fox visit a sick ibis. A hyena stops a goose from running into its mouth, and panthers stand, stand petrified in front of a white cat ambling toward the library. The first idol was a goddess with the body of a hippopotamus. And this is five, and this is the last one I'll read from the group. Horizon helmet, horse hierophant. Sun presses clay snakes back into rows of snarling eyes. Bristles bring back their prey. Red tent clouds lifting wings, blue wizardry of lizards falling from mouth of lion mounted in umber sky. By the time you reached me, I was fading into paint. Dust lips were all that remain. Moon's prim carcass, black stars framed mirror pulled by chariot, dog circle imprint shadow. I cannot stop and look back. I should have carved my name into your face. Uh, then I'm gonna read from Further Adventures in Monochrome. The title of the book comes from, uh, and I'll read some of the poems, it comes from um, being asked by the Walker Art Center to write poems about Eve Klein, which, think about it, blue, 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 <laughs> pink, blue. I did not do that. I just dreamed about it, but I thought that'd be so evil. Not that I'm against that kind of thing, but I thought I'd behave. So this is a ventriloquist, and it's for Jasper Johns, and um, everything in the poem came from something he said. I love everybody saying that he never says anything when he talks. So I thought I should show them they're wrong. Ventriloquist. One night I dreamed that I got up the next morning. I went out, bought materials, and began to paint. The next night I dreamed that I got up and began. That's the way it was done those days have stayed there. Sometimes I, sometimes don't. I would be responsible to it in the present tense. I was in the winter once and I decided I liked going out. I decided I would be it in the winter. The light bulb involved two stones and a miscalculation. I got up the next morning and dreamed that I went out. Winter was done and I hesitated to take any. 
I would not say that I would not say that written upside down and backward. I think this part of a thing close to a model I'm interested in, which suggests the world leaves more air around the elements. I rarely travel. I travel a great deal between here and when I have to. There's a drawing that shows the end of the world, and there is this little figure standing there. I got a job and looked at these things in books. I made three from a child's arm. I thought it would become large. I thought it would be easier to use than avoid. I dreamed that I went out a great deal. I got up and began to be responsible. I decided I would be involved in a miscalculation. I'm interested in what is and what is not. I try to find a way to leap from one to another. I don't like any, least of all mine. You have to leave that as itself and begin, begin again. I imagine everything has its role. I don't know what I would like them to do. It's hard to reconstruct without lying. There seemed to be a kind of catching fire. That any be anywhere in anything, that anywhere be anything in any, that anything be any and anywhere. What distinguishes one from the other? The mirror is not in the mirror. The dots can be gathered into a line of stewed tomatoes. An imagined unit, the square of the height of and closed by, will include the difficulty of determining. I made materials that I dreamed up. I went out and began winter and decided I don't understand what can be implied. I'm neither hopeful nor not hopeful. I think of them as cartoons. I form some cheap idea. I've always been terrified of walking into a room and telling people what to do. It could have many effects, but one wants to get rid of the category. Every period is a period of unsettled language. I've never been able to because I couldn't speak. I read this and the name stuck in my head. So I did write this series of poems called Genghis Chan, because if she, but wait, before I get there, so I was uh, writing in this room and I had, there was a shopping bag on the wall, a plastic, you know, and it said I used to be a plastic bottle. So every day I sat down and this bag would yell at me, I used to be a plastic bottle. <laughs> so I was like, Screw you. <laughs> you know you're in trouble when you're talking to a plastic shopping bag. So I thought I should let it do all the talking. Confessions of a recycled shopping bag. I used to be a plastic bottle. I used to be scads of masticated wattle. I used to be epic spittle, AKA septic piddle. I used to be a pleasant colleague. I used to be a radiant ingredient. I used to be a purple polyethylene pony. I used to be a phony upload project. I used to be a stony blue inhalant. I used to be a family-sized turquoise bottle. I used to be a domesticated pink bubble. I used to be a pleasant red colleague. I used to be a beaming cobalt emollient. I used to be a convenient chartreuse antidepressant. Um, so this Genghis Chan, I got, I have this bad, I love Charlie Chan movies, but you know, you can't really stand up and say, hi, I really love Charlie Chan movies, because people just look at you like, ooh, let's not stand next to this guy at the party. Then we start telling him, like, and one of them was Hungarian, and then you, you realize you're confessing to some deep weirdness in yourself. That... So then I wrote a bunch, and they changed over time, and at a certain point, um, I got interested in Ezra, kind of turning around Ezra Pound's notion of uh, the ideogram, which he got all wrong. So I'm gonna just read three 
This is 27. Mugu. Milk mush. Guy pan. Piss pot. You're sitting there going, what did he just say? Disguise the limit. New body leaves here a lie. Do the bright things. And I'll read one. It's a little more narrative, ha ha. 48. So, no, 43. I only, I only wrote 44, so I was like, how did I get to 48? <laughs> The goal was to write 100, but then when I stopped at 44 and was complaining about it, Joseph Gion wrote to me and said, oh, don't worry, that's the gun Clint Eastwood uses. That's why you should stop now. Went, oh, yeah. 43, long hours toiling at the terminal, beady eyes stuck in a cantaloupe, exotic wildlife and easily disposable jars all yours for only a fraction of a lifetime. I was found in a field of leaves and overturned squirrels. A great disappointment awaits you until further notice. Join together and cry for your temporary place in line. Mortification is the least of my inflictions. Refresh the parts of yourself that remain enamored of the dark. Igor, Yago, and Ichabod sniff the love seat before reaching a consensus. And all along, you thought I was a zombie making naughty noises at you. So I'm gonna read just a couple from this Further Adventures in Monochrome. As soon as I take a sip of beer. I like that Arla stopped and took beer. It's like, ah, oh, phew. I'm just imitating the young. Uh, a lot of this came from a bad translation of, uh, I mean, I've told this story before, but I'll tell again. I didn't really know what to do when I had to write about Eve Klein, because you can't really write describing his paintings. And I said that I would do it, so there I was. Uh, and then I, found, I started reading everything I could written about him. I thought, nah. And then I found this translation uh, of his writing done by someone who is German, translating from French into English. And then, as often published books published, they don't have any proofreaders. And it was like filled with really funny little statements. And the first one I read, and I, this was like a godsend. I, it said, I went on an error. I said, there I am. I'm home. I've been going on an error all my life, starting, starting with writing poetry. So and this, I think of, uh, it occurred to me, the first poem is really kind of written in response. This sounds so rational <laughs> and logical. It's a lie. I just thought of it on the way here, that the first poem I'm reading you is in response to the English poem. It's not, but it is. My fundamental self is at war with my multiple personalities. I love everything that does not belong to me, which is to say my life, but I despise everything that belongs to me, education, inherited psychology, physical attributes, in short, anything that is me because of exterior circumstances. My multiple selves are at war with my fundamental personality because one is never only one. I'm aware that in writing this, I've committed an error of diplomacy. 
I recognize that people will claim these notes and thoughts are confused, poorly expressed, as if expression has anything to do with it, emphatic, for they've been written day by day, even during the rain that threatens to close down the sky. I know that many will regard these statements as another example of bad taste, a poor substitute for poetry, when in fact poetry is not what I'm after. My fundamental self despises all that belongs to me, multiple personalities, butterflies, and silent hoarding, each more poorly expressed than the previous era of diplomacy. Who claims these notes are inherited circumstances? My multiple selves are at war with substitutes for poetry. My fundamental self is at war with poems offered as substitutes. I know that many will conclude these statements do not belong to me. I'm aware in writing this during the rain that it is not raining. Three, I recently declared that the artist of tomorrow will continuously recreate herself by being able to levitate. I've already made the first steps toward work of this type. I commanded my living brushes by remote control. I'll just read two more. Or maybe three. Anyway, I was just in uh, Chicago and I was on a panel with Leslie Dill, who is, as you probably know, is obsessed with Emily Dickinson. I decided I was not obsessed with Emily Dickinson. <laughs> you have to say these things. Come on. <laughs> So I had this, the, so I, there's a famous line by Dickinson, and then, of course, Eve Klein said the opposite, and I was like, in pig heaven. Four, I dwell in possibility, Emily Dickinson. I dwell in impossibility, Eve Klein. <laughs> you should understand that I did not want you to read a painting. I wanted you to bathe in it before words domesticated the experience, and you turned to such standbys as, illumination and transcendent to describe what happened to you. Painting should not be sentenced to sentences. Painting is color, I yelled at my first champion and biggest supporter. Color banishes words from its domain. When you read a painting, you turn it into language, but there's so much that cannot be turned into language that each of us experiences every day. Red shadows leak out of rusting cars and collapse bridges. Green smoke rises from behind horizons and rooftops, the spectrum of your mother's voice the last time she spoke to you. Every day there are thresholds that you must cross to reach the domain where words mar every transmission, rendering them intangible. We put our memory of these reverberations aside and favor what's known and we believe knowable. We say we're going to the beach and we will look at the ocean and leave indentations in the sand, but that's not what happens. We go there to ponder a blue parcel cut from infinity. True artists, true poets and artists know where language ends, which is why they go there. Some settle for going beyond the possible into possibility, but others want to dwell in the impossible. I'm not talking fantasy here because that version of the impossible is just a story about a girl named Thumbelina or a boy named Jack. The ones who go to where two roads diverge in a yellow wood are not poets because they believe that experience can be reduced to a lesson about choices. True poets know that language is neither window nor mirror. The mistake is to believe that the opposite is true, that words or signs are arbitrary. This is my example of why words are not arbitrary. Charles Baudelaire believed that there are perfumes for which all matter is porous. These perfumes can permeate the air of one's dreams. Our thoughts quiver in the shadows that fall over us. They begin to free their wings and rise in flight, tinged with azure, glazed with rose, spangled with gold. Azure, rose, gold. I was not thinking of Baudelaire when I made my paintings, but the poet was clearly dreaming of me when he sat at his desk and wrote the perfume flask. Can't you see 
that this is how I radiating outward happened to appear on this planet, this speck of dust. Eve Klein was born because Baudelaire predicted this propitious event by naming colors which, like all colors, escaped the confines of their names, becoming more than an emanation of infinity. Even black can get away from its name, which is my, why Malevich had to surround it with white. But what is color that isn't surrounded by another color? What is that boundless world we catch a glimpse of whenever we look up at the sky? Is it so vast that we must turn away from it, afraid that it'll swallow us up, which it will? Astronomy, the Greeks believed, was a royal science, <coughs> which means I'm a royal painter. Do not confuse me, however, with a painter of royalty with Aang, who used lines to hold and improve the faces of his sitters who believed in the despotic power of beauty. I'm not interested in beauty. I'm not Andy Warhol. He longed for possibility, but was afraid of what it might tell him. I dwell in impossibility and want to be embraced by what it will tell me. My name is Eve Klein. There's a photograph of me that you might know. I've put on my best suit and jumped out a window. My arms are outspread, but they're not wings. I don't need them to fly. Nor am I the prince of clouds, Baudelaire's albatross fallen from the sky. Screw that fascist Marinetti. My wings are not, my arms are not the wings of a drunkard beating against the wall. Mine are the art stretched arms of a diver. I fall effortlessly through the air, but I never am completely fallen. The cobblestones and I will never meet. I hover in a miracle, which is why you believe in the photograph. Even after you've learned how I tricked you, it wasn't that hard to do. The true magician shows everyone how the trick was done. And after seeing how you were deceived, you believe in the trick all the more. I jumped out the window and I stayed in the air, which is where you wanted me to stay. I dwell in impossibility, that zone that lies beyond here and there while embracing both. So now I'm gonna read some new work. Uh, oh, I, I wrote this poem, then I didn't know what I thought of it, which is why I'm gonna read it to you. So you probably all know the line, in dreams begin responsibilities, that line by Delmore Schwartz. <clears throat> why I resigned from the Delmore Schwartz fan club. <laughs> In dreams begin irresponsibilities, wayward emotional flights, lost footage, folded snapshots, tendency toward briefness, telephones rotting inside their crooked black cradles, vacancies grown huge, donut tower mounted on toxic modules, synthetic somnambulist army marching out of sex brigade, sputtering in cooperation room, down from where you're a scientist or a druggist, a head wound with blue knitted scarf and cordovan and corduroy, pressing your nose against the earth, Cupid's broken left arm, botched potato atop a burning shower. Grant this wheat poet, this wheezing pariah, this purveyor of riddled language, impecunious slug, tattooed status of stethoscope flower, poisonous petals growing in vats of jellied soup, borrowed archer, blessed be the bits in glassy grime. Special attention must be paid to a variety of chthonic operations, journeying along narrow paths between Santa and Satan, Samarkand and Sausalito, between monastically cropped lawns, raising their spikes and triumphs, snapped open and released, almanacs cataloging temptations and redemptions, averted and advertised, soft ice sonnet, lemonade with frozen couplet, meticulously cut cubes of cheese, poetry of oblig obligatory peephole, island of scholarly flocks, pork barrel and beans. The carcass is a remnant of what fled the scene, dragging its tongue across the earth to no avail, windows nailed shut in yellow clay, doors burned to their shadows, copious ashes boomeranging across barn, tightening the treasure chests of fallen chestnuts, slain brethren, amending backyard barbecue pits, determined inhabitants, hatched in spectrum of normalized behavior, substitute underworld arcade, incarcerated conversation, 
daughter of a cancer, son of an egregious terror. There are many ways to repeat yourself. This is not one of them. This is fragrance gone amuck amidst sacred hydrocarbons, scintillation of metallic water, graffiti. Poets had germ engravers disguised as grave diggers, dawn as a seagull stuck on the end of a fork, plenum of glabrous vampires gleaming arrangement and camera shy, using only long ropes and sharpened pegs, ban the use of euphemisms. This poem will not extol virtues of the one-room schoolhouse, grand pasha of motivating metaphors heated by pot-bellied police officer, spoonfuls of coal dangled at the mouth of glowing dog, ghosted door of meaning, trumpet clocks, composition of anxiety, notoriously unwilling to offer burial, plagiarism plagued provinces, Egyptian garage complete with gas operated chariot, whalebone bathtub and muslin shawl. Do not slobber on yourself in an attempt to be distracting and beautiful. Do not paraphrase your green fatty regions. They are lectures on the inevitability of collapse. Do not pretend to fabricate frivolity, just another post in the worm fence. Do not dance around the bride toiling at her daily bread. For I was not myself that day, or anyone else for that matter. Time travel is a popular vacation resort, vacated escort where thinking becomes a form of relief, a poker dot rain cloud attempting to communicate with a pink mesa. More pilgrims dutifully trudge across six lane highway of higher education, enter the great rotunda, each sucking on a lozenge, a blessed impediment granted imperceptible privileges. Summer actuant accentuates colors found in parking lots, drive through commuter carpet, majestic mauve, not among them. The air you breathe becomes an iron collar, a grammatical reaction to an inherited condition. Corruption engines steaming into stacks of paper like widows and widowers waiting to greet you at the end of a long journey. A poem trafficking in words, circling mountains of shoes and shirts. Dentures from another time and place, the weather in the cellar conjuring spiral dregs, character development is no longer part of the syllabus. Consigned a bevy of blonde colored bleachers flooded with glissando pigments. This is not the right time to imitate nausea. Unhitch your wagon from horses of irritability. Gallant nights melt in merciless sun. Daylight's rubber eraser kiss dust sticking to your lips. I'll just read uh, two more. What was I thinking when I wrote that? <laughs> I'll read three more. This I couldn't help. I, this is not finished, but I could. I wanted to write an alphabetical list of insults. <laughs> so it's called Sticks and Stones. Airhead, bird brain, clunk, dolt, empty enema skull, fatness, goon, half wit. Ignoramus, jackass, know nothing, lump, mutt, nimrod, oaf, priggish potato, queasy quagbire, rat meat, supreme, schnook, troglodyte, underling, van carpet, warthog, xanadu, zipperhead, yo yo, bongo face, zero plus. I feel like I want to write a thousand of those. But... <laughs> Is that something you should not admit to? can say it to your psychiatrist, I guess. Shall I read two more? This, um, the Blackest Black Forest. Just nada e nada, which means drop dead in your cleanest socks, oh grand and fearless pumpkin. Whether brave or bedraggled or both, the fact that you can put anything or anyone into my poem doesn't mean that you should submit an innocent biped to the vagaries of an adventure, escapade, or journey, any exploit that might be considered a quest, search, mission, or hunt. Haven't you been listening? Don't you press your ears to the airwaves? Undertakings in which there is something momentous, earth-shattering, or life-changing, waiting in an undisclosed location, the end have not 
repeat, have not been acceptable or even advisable for decades in certain longer time frame. It is nostalgia personified ever since, ever since the price of gasoline began rising. The increased industrial capacity of our treacherous neighbors to the east became an economic factor in the calamitous aftermath of the fall of grandiose empires to the north or south. Officially speaking, there are to be no further missions, pursuits, or expeditions either within the domain of this poem or outside its porous borders in the no man's land of ruined kingdoms, broken oil derricks, and growing silt deposits. Any such chase could, would, and should end in disaster, an upsetting of the lately achieved balance, a crisis that is to be avoided now that villagers across the land have erected new traffic signals outside their municipal swimming pools. Listen to what they're saying. Please be careful when approaching the crosswalk, and be advised that the starlings, nuthatches, and finches must be collectively recognized for their contributions to the recent paper drive. This is the poem in which you're most happy, the one that most closely resembles you in all your minor notes of glory. And this is the last thing I'll read. I wrote it like three days ago. I have no idea what it's doing. Three, not four seasons, reasons. One, envy is the little engine driving this infernal machine called society, knowing this word is meaningless to ants on the brink of becoming sales agents. This swing pull, that fur coat, and further back in the reddening twilight, another valuable carcass draped about bear's shoulders, soft as the caress citizens imagine is theirs to administer in a time of moaning need. These iniquities are commonplace. The rest is not gravy. Pockets of black air squander obscenities whenever they squawk into their cellular devices, thinking there's an ear of magnitude on the other side. Pandemonium waits to spring from the sky. Sanctuary sits in the dark. A burning dollhouse crammed with seraphs. Two. Conflict is a pamphlet delivered to your front door, a welcome mat that greets you when you begin your round of branching errands. Progress proves elusive, a cloud becoming a cloud even as necessary steps are taken, and forgiveness is construed to have occurred between acquisitions. There once was a time when all this was coated in the postcard colors of sunset, when sleeping wasn't done on tiptoe, but now, Venerating the inaudible no longer quenches your thirst for suitable moisture. And this is the last one. Study proves futile when it comes to rows of stars drying in the grass. Exact copies of previous defeats are collated and delivered to the proper authority standard, standing patiently under awnings, waiting to receive another blow to their diminished heads. Pronouns are summarily rejected in favor of something less personal, more precise. An ink sparrow, a faux ticket, an electrical device, anything that guarantees entry but not exit is called for. Defects modify their ensemble. On the agenda, attrition replaces nutrition. Today's tent of wind threatened with another collapse. Thanks. Thank you.